This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext, along with Governance Knowledge Partner Paul Weiss and contributing partners National Investor Relations Institute and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. I'm TK Kerstetter with Corporate Board Member. And once again, it's my pleasure to welcome my co-hosts, Scott Cutler with the NYSE Euronext. And we have a great topic for today. We're going to be talking about GMI and uh, their uh, ratings evaluations of some companies. And joining us for that discussion is Jack Zwingli, who's the CEO of GMI. And GMI in the old days stood for the uh, governance Metrics International, right. um, but uh, one of the significant things that happened is governance metrics and audit integrity and corporate library um, last year, I think, um, had a merger. And uh, Jack, I think that's a great place for us to start is uh, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about that merger and what it means. Sure, and thanks for having me here, TK. Um, it's, uh, it's something that we kind of, we viewed that the market had advanced to the point, and um, when the market, I talk about the market for corporate governance ratings, for information around environmental, social, and governance information, ESG as it's, as it's known in the market, to the point that we were going to be best served by building up our scale and our scope. What, what this did was allow us to combine our ratings. We were all doing ratings on corporations as to their governance and, and um, ESG characteristics. Uh, and this gave us the ability to combine those into a single rating, uh, to combine the businesses. It gave us more scale from a, a global standpoint, uh, gave us better presence in Europe in particular, where these are very critical issues. Uh, so we put the two businesses together first, corporate library and governance metrics merged back in, in July of last year, and then Audit Integrity joined as a, as a, a member in, in uh, November of last year, and that's in for the last few months, the uh, last several months, we've been working hard to put the businesses together. Jack, can you help uh, our audience understand the difference in terms of evaluation of companies by GMI as compared to what we're all familiar with in terms of proxy advisory firms sure. and that of, for example, ISS? Sure. Well, ISS is certainly one of the best known, along with Glass Lewis, of the proxy advisory firms. And they're looking to give recommendations on companies. We're, we're not. We're giving ratings and research. So. Our services are often used by investors to help them vote their proxies, to do research around the board, around compensation practices, around shareholder proposals. Uh, so we are certainly in the same broad category of providing proxy research, uh, but we look at things that we have found to be most material to investors in particular, things that, that, that either move markets or represent risks over the long term. And we also, um, without meaning to, to criticize uh, ISS in particular, but we all kind of know some of the criticisms are around potential conflicts of interest. They work with corporations and charge fees to corporations to help them improve their governance practices. Uh, we don't do that. We are completely independent. We do not interface with corporations directly, and we view our ratings as being more objective because of that. One of the interesting things as we talk about ESG is the notion of a governance model. In, in Europe, for example, the notion of stakeholder taking into account these things is, is different than we are in the United States. Right. In the U.S., we clearly have a legal structure that has a duty of loyalty, a duty of care in the boardroom, but it's to shareholders and not necessarily stakeholders. Right. So how do you look at that governance model today? Well, part of it is in the, some of the, the uh, nomenclature and abbreviations we're using. We were kind of interchanging governance with ESG. Uh, in Europe in particular, the environmental and social aspects have come much more into play, that there's this view broadly what is often called as sustainability. So board members might hear it more referred to as sustainability or corporate social reporting, CSR, uh, but it's all kind of under that same rubric of looking at environmental, social, and governance issues and trying to give a, a sense of whether the corporation is acting in a way that will provide sustainable benefits, not only from a financial and investor standpoint, but to society in general. And that obviously broadens out the definition of, of what people are looking at. So with ESG, you really have a mix of stakeholders that include the employees, certainly. It includes the, the community. 
the government, it includes environmental issues, social issues. So w with ESG, we're pulling together, and again, part of the reasons why we put the business together was so we can pull together a broader set of research and give a full measure of ESG risks and, and research. When I look at your website, I you know, certainly see the um, adv advocacy for board transparency, for shareholder, you know, power kind of thing, putting the more in the shareholders' hands. And um, at the same time, um, I'm curious about how you feel, you know, you must have been happy when the SEC added its disclosures to the proxy. Um, but when I look at things like the qualifications for directors uh, and their experiences and things like diversity, it, it ended up to be so lawyered up, I mean, and so basic. I just can't possibly think how that helps the investor. And I'd, I'd just be curious, you know, that happiness had to go to somewhat sadness in the sense of what it ended up being like. Yeah, well, yeah, and I agree with you, yeah, it's, it, but it's not untypical uh, that uh, corporations or anyone, and it's very understandable that the disclosures are are continuing to be narrowed into let's do the, the least possible to meet the letter of the law without opening ourselves up to potential liability, to potential shareholder uh, feedback, that negative feedback. So it, it's understandable, but, but of course it's disappointing. And in some ways I would put it out there that that's one of the reasons that we're in business, because we then go into more detail. We do more analysis around uh, board qualifications and board experience as part of our reports. Uh, so more disclosure is always better. The more disclosure from our standpoint, I think the market standpoint, the better. Uh, but it also does open up the opportunity for research firms such as ourselves to, to then fill that gap and say, well, I know if the company is providing a limited amount of information, we can go in and do some further analysis around that and hopefully present investors with information that will help them evaluate companies and make decisions. Well, I, I have two questions. One, your organization clearly collects a lot of data. Mm -hmm. uh, what worries you most about what you see in boardrooms today? is one question. And the second question is, how is all of this translated into performance right. at the board level? Right. Uh, well, on the first point, I, I speak at sometimes in front of, of board members. I'll be on a panel, and, and I find board members to be very conscientious. Uh, they're, they're, they're concerned about the same issues the market is concerned about when you get them a little bit offline. I think in the communications to the market, however, there's, there's much too much defensiveness. Uh, there, there's much too much hyperbole uh, around, say, the, the proxy access rule. Uh, you know, this was meant to allow investors, uh, long-term investors, to place nominees, not, not, not directors, but to place nominees on the ballot. And you look at something like that and, and see this very aggressive response from corporations. So I, I think the, the investors that, that we hear from, and they're our primary client base is, is large investors, uh, you know, they, they're concerned that corporations are much too defensive, uh, much too ready to, to take up arms and, and to try to limit things as much as possible, to, to TK's point as well. So those are the things that we get uh, most concerned about is, is trying to find some middle ground. It feels a little like politics in, in D.C., that there's, there's got to be some common middle ground because most board members are quite reasonable and understand, and they have some concerns. I on a panel recently where we were talking about executive compensation, and they were asking each other, well, how do, how do you handle executive compensation? How can we do a better job in executive compensation, which, of course, is one of the, the hot-button issues for all board members. So there's a, a genuine desire, I think, at the board level to, to look at these changes and to, and to make changes. But the external approach, what we hear back, is, is much too aggressive and much too reactive and, and much too, hy too much hyperbole about that. I, on your second question, it does get back to materiality. I think board members, as well as, as investors, want ESG to mean something. They don't want it to be a politically correct checklist. And, uh, and by the way, that's another criticism that, that has been leveled against ISS in the past, is that it's a, it's a best practices, it's a cookie cutter approach. Uh, and, and we try to get past that. It's, it's, it's you know, something that you do have to sometimes get it down to a level where you can compare companies, and that may come across as a, as a bit simple. But investors and other stakeholders, and including the corporate, the corporation uh, and, and their board members, do want this to be material and meaningful. 
so what we do is, is ours is based on a series of outcomes. We look at companies that have had regulatory actions. We look at companies that have had shareholder litigation, have had severe or surprise drops in their stock. That's what we base our ratings on to say, when these things happen, let's look back and see what were some leading indicators of that and make sure our ratings are doing the best job we can to capture that type of risk. Jack, when you, when you look at that and you, you take our viewers and they say, oh no, here's another group that has the chance to recommend withhold votes and you know, that, that's obviously going to create a challenge in their minds of um, you know, what's, the, what's the value proposition here for boards. Um, we on this show have talked, or I've talked a lot about how that I understand the logic of having some, playing a, a role in who serves you on the board. What I don't understand at all is this concept, and it starts with, say, on pay as an example, where board members have somebody sitting on their shoulder watching every decision. You wouldn't like that as CEO. Sure. I wouldn't like that. Sure. You know, you know, isn't there some kind of trade-off here that the one part is logical, the other isn't logical? It doesn't seem like anybody gets very close to solving that problem, though. Yeah. Well, TK, the way I look at it, when I would, would will speak to, to board members, either formally or informally, it's the first point is just recognize that this is happening, that I investors in particular, but other stakeholders as well, want answers to these questions. They want to see accountability. They want to see transparency. And those are two wonderful words that I don't think any board member would disagree. Well, some board members might. But most board members are not going to disagree with that. Uh, so so my, main, my first point is, look, this is happening. There's been a clear movement to broader disclosure, broader disclosure on non-financial issues around executive compensation, around board independence and board qualifications. This is happening. The, the market has moved in that direction. So you can fight it, but it, it's going to make you look bad, and it's, it's, it's a movement that's not going to turn around. So recognize that it's happening. Try to take advantage of that. Try to be proactive and disclose information that you know the market is interested in. Uh, so I, you know, I, th I think it's, it's something that the market is recognizing, the board members are recognizing is happening. The proactive board members are doing something about that. Uh, and they're using companies like us to fill in the gaps. So, you know, we, we wouldn't exist if there was perfect disclosure and perfect information. So the fact that, that our ratings and others are being relied upon in the market to evaluate corporations uh, is always going to happen, whether it's rating agencies or, or firms like ourselves or regulators. Uh, companies are going to be evaluated, and the, the, the trick is to, I think, find the right balance so it's not viewed as an, an onerous uh, restriction, but actually something that they can use to their advantage and be proactive about. Well, I think it's very important that this show sort of showcase an organization like yours so that people know what's out there to exist. I'm not expecting any special contributions coming out of this by our audience towards GMI, just so you under, understand that Understood. part of it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but it's, it's a pleasure to have you join us and uh, fill our audience in, and uh, we'll have to have you back sometime in the future to mm -hmm. fill us in on what's happening. And uh, for Scott and I, that concludes this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. We hope you found it useful. We'll be back again next week, as usual, um, to cover another critical topic that will help you be a better board member and committee member. And thank you for joining us. Join us again next week for This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext, along with Governance Knowledge Partner Paul Weiss and contributing partners National Investor Relations Institute and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. <laughs>